I'm going to talk about a hobby project of mine called Asrael and what I call a scientific game engine. And I'm going to use it today to build an autopilot for a spaceship. But just uh, it's a small disclaimer, given that pretty much every talk here seems to be about machine learning, there's no machine learning in this one. So if you're keen on one, that is probably not the talk. Nevertheless, so as a motivation is I have always been a bit envious about um, software engineers and lately also about data scientists because it's fairly easy for them to acquire skills in their area. So all you have to usually do is find the software that does what you need doing, find a tutorial, practice a bit, and then rinse, repeat. So it's very accessible. Everybody can do it if they want to. But if you are an engineer but not a software engineer, so if you belong to the kind of engineers who build, for instance, a Mars rover, or a reusable rocket, or a self-driving car, or an airport luggage handling system, then how do you acquire the skills for these kind, to solve these kind of problems? Because clearly a Mars rover, for instance, it is not going to be a web app. So if, if, uh, yeah, you need to have there's some kind of real hardware moving somewhere around in the real world, and ideally it ought to also make sense of its environment without crashing. But, and as a, as a case study, as I mentioned earlier, I thought, what would it take to build an autopilot for a spaceship, for instance? So, and it turns out you do not need that much. So what you need is where you are right now, where you would like to be. You need to have some control over the engine, so to move in some more or less intelligent way to where you would like to end up. And of course, you need the spaceship. And that's your problem right there, because you do not have a spaceship. And you cannot buy one on Amazon. You might be able to buy one on eBay. But even if you could buy one on eBay, it tends to be a tad bit on the expensive side. So if you happen to purchase one, you probably wouldn't use it to experiment with your autopilot. So in a computer game, on the other hand, the spaceship is free. Everybody can have one, doesn't cost you anything, easy to experiment, and you can crash it as often as you like. So computer game seems to be roughly the way to go. The problem with a classical computer game, or more particularly the engine that drives them, is that they were built for entertainment, not for realistic simulations of the physics. And that makes them more or less the right tool, but not quite, simply because the design is usually geared towards running on a, a single computer. It's very monolithic, and they're cutting every corner that they can, in particular about the physics simulation, just because they would like to marshal the available CPU cycles to immersive gameplay, so usually visualization or audio effects. And that simply led me to the question, what would it take to build something like a game engine but that was built purely for proper large-scale physical simulations? So something that would not be monolithic, something that you can actually use in a scientific context as well. And so I thought it should probably be distributed right from the start, it should have a network API only, so that every language that can make a network connection can actually interact with the whole engine, which means it's a language agnostic and where there are no corners cut when it comes to the physics. So it could really simulate more or less arbitrarily large and arbitrarily complex physical systems. And that is what I was trying to do with Astral. It used to be a proof of concept, but it's slowly outgrowing the, uh, slowly outgrowing the proof of concept stage by now. And yeah, what I would like to show now is a simple live demo of how it could look for the, this magnificent spaceship. Not the prettiest one I've ever seen, but it will do for our purposes. So a simple cube with six thrusters in order to move it in the three dimensions. And the question is, how difficult is it now to build an autopilot for something like this? And if the God of Life demos are with me, then we should. Okay, okay. So this is the simple setup. So don't worry about the code here. Um, that's what is going on in detail is not that important. So the first cell is simply boilerplate and importing stuff, in particular importing a particular class called PyData Dallas client, which is a wrap around the normal client just to make this presentation a bit more seamless. And executing this, nothing much happens other than that the spaceship moved to the middle, so that's fine. And the first 
demo, if you want, is simply to specify an, a particular initial velocity, and all you should see is move the ship moving. I see the ship moving. So in itself, it's not very stunning, but the point to highlight here is that you have two individual components. So one is purely the visualization side, which in this case runs in a browser. And if I gave you my IP address, you could see exactly the same scene. I'm not going to give you my IP address, but um, you could. And on the left side, you have your standard connection to your typical tools that you would use, in this case, an IPython notebook. But those two components, they run completely independent of each other. So in the background, there's the entire s stack running that takes care of, of the magic, if you want. And you simply connect to it from, in this case, Python. And you connect to it, in this case, via a web viewer. But uh, um, both of those components are purely optional. And all that this program did was, as I said, setting the initial velocity. And then every 200 milliseconds, it sampled the position. And you simply get a plot here. So since it moved in different velocities in different dimensions, you get a um, yeah, you see how the spaceship moves. So fairly straightforward, nothing fancy here. And now moving on to the controller, which is exactly the same program as we had before. It just has these few additional lines. So again, you don't have to, you don't need to know anything about control theory or anything. So the basic principle that um, that's going to happen here is that all you do is compute the, the error, which is simply a difference between your um, current position and your desired position. And then based on this error, you try to apply force via the thrusters in order to move the spaceship so that eventually it reaches the desired position. And how you do that, that is subject to control theory. And there are more or less smart ways to do this. And in this presentation, it's only going to be a half decent autopilot, but it will work. So and for the first demo, it would simply be a purely proportional controller. And that simply means we take the error. We Amplify with some random factor here, and then see what happens. And so what you can see here is a slight a bit of visual feedback. That's part of what this PyData class that I mentioned earlier does. So that I don't have to code that manually here. And you can see how the spaceship, it ought to reach position 4, but it clearly overshot and was moving back. So you can contemplate that maybe what you simply need is a bit more oomph coming out of the boosters. Hang on a second. So maybe if we simply uh, add it a delete uh, symbol here. So the same thing, just with a stronger force. And this time, it would still not reach an equilibrium. If you think about that for a second, it becomes very obvious why that is. So because for as long as you're to the left of the desired position, you just keep pushing to the right and vice versa. And really, what you should be doing is slowly slowing down as you approach. So again, I'm not going to bore you with the details of how to build controllers here. And just suffice to say that if you pick the right values here, then you can build a controller that does actually very well. And you can have, again, um, see that visualized in your 3D view, which you can freely zoom around if you want to. And we should see how this now actually does move to the desired position. And this is really all you need in order to build an autopilot. So in this case, it's exactly the same program again, but I've replaced the loop that we had before with a simple call to this controller method, which does exactly the piece of code that we saw before. And this now simply follows a couple of waypoints. So this is how I would specify your autopilot going from point 0.1 to point 0.2 to point 0.3 and so on. And in this case, I simply specify the waypoint so we're actually moving around this obstacle here. So the ball of cubes, it moves up, then we'll move a bit further to the right and eventually down again. Okie dokie. 
So that is one way to get to the desired position here. Now, another way would be this. It's, it will work, and we will still reach the final position, but unless you have very good insurance on your spaceship, this is probably not the kind of way that you, that you would like it to take. And this is, of course, where all the engineering comes into place. Yeah? So how do you string together the controller that moves the spaceship from A to B and connect it to smart decisions about how to avoid an obstacle, of course? And this is where... Um, so th yeah, this is where you could start introducing something like, um, for instance, machine learning tools. So I'll just sort of have an honorable mention of it in the talk to find a smart way around obstacles. So I wouldn't know how to do that, but maybe someone will. And a very similar problem, just slightly more pronounced is when the wall is not static, but when you really have, like, say, a field of asteroids in this case, where you have to move your ship through that asteroid field without it ideally crashing against any asteroids. That is an even, it's a problem that's even harder, obviously, because you have to track those asteroids and you have to find out where to set the waypoints, waypoints in between and move through them. So highly, it's already getting fairly non-trivial, but it still would be a lot of cheating involved because Right now, you could simply ask the, you know, the engine where those asteroids are. But in real life, you cannot do that. So in real life, you would have to somehow infer where those asteroids are based on some sensor feedback. For instance, you could have some camera. So like now, we have a virtual camera that renders the scene here. But we could also render the scene from the view of the cube, say. And if you render that one, you get an image. And if you have several cameras, you might get several images. You can put that into some image processing library for pre-processing, and you could feed that to your machine learning tool chain if you feel like, and try to infer from that or try to learn from that where the objects are and what kind of objects they are, and maybe just inferring from how they move where the objects are very light or heavy. So because if it's a styrofoam cube, you might as well ram it, so without any adverse effects, but if it's a really solid rock, you probably don't want to. So in all these components, you would have to put together in order to build a proper, fully functioning autonomous spaceship. So in terms of the demo, this is all I have, so I'm not going, I'm not going to show anything super smart here, how this moves around, but I will hopefully convey the idea that you can have a full-fledged physics simulation running and to hopefully mimic a realistic system well enough to design and build it. So. Now the whole thing, um, not surprisingly, is powered by Python and contains all the usual suspects that you would expect, so some NumPy in there, some SerumQ, Tornado, MongoDB, what have you. And the uh, language is Python 3, just in case anybody Anybody cares? Yeah. And uh, architecture itself, uh, it's not going to go into, very, into too much detail. Uh, it's just a fairly high-level overview. It tends to help if you know about Terry Pratchett's Disk World novel, because all the terms that I use or all the modules that I have are, are named after characters in there. The, the important thing about it is purely that every error that you have in this, in this diagram would be a full-fledged TCP connection. So the whole Backend is really a network of microservices, all of them stateless, so you can really run them on individual, uh, on independent machines. So all of them you could distribute on a cluster as large as you want. You can create as many instances as you want. And the way to connect, as I mentioned, is either via serum Q client, so that would be everything but JavaScript, or via WebSockets, which is probably only JavaScript for whom that is important. And that's already it. So in summary, as well itself, it is not a game engine. So it should feel a bit like one, it should behave a bit like one, but it is really meant to be a virtual reality environment where you can build, design, engineer, and experiment with physic physical systems, how to control them and how they interact. So and the main purpose or the sole purpose of this whole project was to make the standard classical engineering topics as accessible as software engineering is today. And that would be really it. So if you have any um, questions, or if you want to see the code or anything, that's on my GitHub repository. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to shoot me an email. And just as a last thing that I'll plug in here is, um, since 
no one pays me to do any of that. So if you think this is cool or useful in for whatever reason, and you could be bothered to give me a star on GitHub for it, that would be really awesome. Thank you very much. <laughs>